Welcome back, I'm James McIntyre, and in this video, we're discussing some of the finer points of the installation of our VRF indoor units. Feel free to come back at any time and watch again, especially in the field. So, starting off, every indoor unit includes a list of accessories. This list is found at the beginning of your manual, included with every unit. Nearly all of the units include a cardboard template. You use this to mark holes for mounting. Every unit includes some peel and stick insulation wraps designed to wrap around the flared connections and piping insulation at the unit. The first units we'll look at installing are our ceiling cassettes. As mentioned before, we have our standard four-way ceiling cassette, our two-way ceiling cassette, and our compact four-way ceiling cassette. Clearances for airflow and serviceability are very important. As you can see in the chart in the bottom right-hand corner, different sizes require different clearances. Note that we need nearly five feet of clearance from a wall. This prevents short cycling and uneven air distribution. Using the cardboard template, you'll mark where your mounting bolts and threaded rod will be placed. It beats using a measuring tape or holding the unit up. Always use the breakaway hose included with the unit for your condensate drain. Never use cement or glue to connect your drain to the unit. Always use the included pipe clamp instead. All ceiling cassettes have a built-in condensate lift pump. Pay attention to the maximum height. Usually around 30 inches, these are designed to lift the water high enough to gravity drain or to drain into a common drain. Be sure to support your drain and make sure that it is always going downhill from its lift point. Always follow local codes and again, never glue the drain to the unit. Use the breakaway hose. When you first power on a unit, the condensate pump runs for a few minutes. That's how you test the drain. Pour water into the drain pan using a squeeze bottle with a straw and power on the disconnect. It is imperative that you test your drains prior to commissioning. Hanging the unit from threaded rod is pretty simple. Make sure you have a nut and washer on the bottom and the top. Use a split washer or locking nut to keep it everything in place. Do you know why you need one on top? To keep the unit from hurting someone if it gets bumped. Included in the accessory kit is something pretty simple, but it definitely comes in handy. It is a set of four cardboard pieces that you slide onto your threaded rod. This keeps that top washer up and out of the way when you're trying to hang the unit. It's cheaper and easier than a zip tie. Like many things, once you see the panel, it's pretty easy to figure out how to install it. The unit has small hooks on each corner and the panel has metal loops. You simply push the metal loops over the hooks. Then there are screws that you tighten in each corner. This pulls the panel up to the unit. When mounting the panel, keep the harnesses out of the way. When you've mounted the panel, plug in your harnesses to the pigtails from the main board. The plugs are different sizes so you can't hook them up wrong, but please don't take that as a challenge. So let's talk about a common mistake. On a ceiling cassette, the return is in the middle and the supplies are on the outsides. When the panel is installed correctly, the supply air makes it out of the unit and room air is returned in the center. If the unit has been mounted too high above the ceiling, the panel can't be pressed up to the unit. This can force supply air into the return causing short cycling. There is gasket material around the return to prevent this, but you can definitely defeat it by installing the unit too high above the ceiling. I've seen sites where dozens of ceiling cassettes were installed like this, and it took a lot of time and effort to remedy. Now let's talk about installing the wall mounted unit. If you've ever installed a mini split, most of this will not be new to you. Obviously, you need clearance on both sides at six inches. Why do you need six inches on the top? Because your return is on the top. We recommend over eight feet from the floor. However, if you have short ceilings, mount the unit as high as you can, leaving six inches at the top. Know that you'll achieve less airflow that way, but sometimes you have to work with what you have. Again, mount it as high as you can, six inches from the ceiling. If the unit is installed close to the floor, it will not work. There are five different ways to route your piping. In all but one configuration, you'll have room to mount an internal mini pump. If you have to route the piping so that it is exiting on the left of the unit while facing it, you'll have to use an external pump. In that case, you can use this sleek external pump from Rector Seal. 
called the mini Blanc. The mounting brackets are pretty straightforward. Mark the center of your unit and use anchors to mount the bracket to the wall. If the bracket is level, your unit will be level. Mount it so that it is level. When penetrating an outside wall, do so in a downhill fashion. Why downhill? Anybody? Because gravity. You need to go downhill for your condensate drain. Seal up the hole so we can keep outside air out of the unit. If someone says the unit overheats in the winter and overcools in the summer, check that hole. To mount the unit, you can have a friend help you, use a mighty bracket from Rector Seal, or you can muscle it up on your own. Tilt it forward and hang it on the tabs at the top of the bracket. Tilt it back down and press it against the wall. It should click. The click comes from tabs snapping into slots on the bracket. Finally, insert the screw or screws into the bottom to permanently secure the unit. Now for my favorite unit, the console. Every time you've seen a wall-mounted unit mounted four inches from the floor, this is the style that should have been used instead. There are four configurations for installation, although our recommendation is to install it so that it is exposed. Of course, clearances are important for service and operation. There are two mounting brackets that the unit hangs on. You'll use the cardboard template to mark those holes. Use anchors that can support the weight of the unit. I'll say it again. Use anchors that can support the weight of the unit. There are seven different ways to route the piping, so you definitely have some options. See your manual for details. Again, ensure any wall penetration is downhill and sealed. Removing the front panel is pretty easy to figure out, but you'll be removing four screws from the front and you'll press down on the three hanging tabs on the top. Then the panel slides off. The drain pan is located along the bottom of the coil, highlighted in red in this diagram. There is room to install a mini pump within the void on the right hand side of the pan. Let's install a floor and ceiling unit. One thing to note is that it is a fairly large unit physically, but it can be installed on the ceiling or a wall. You'll often see this type of unit above a door on the ceiling in a storefront like this one, in lieu of an air dam. Another common installation is in equipment rooms where your customer would rather not risk having a water producing unit above their sensitive electronic equipment. So the big selling point of this style is its superior air throw. In a wall mount installation, you obviously have some clearances you have to meet. You'll need roughly two feet on each side for service. Mounting this to a wall is a lot like the console, but the mounting bracket is built into the unit. Use the template to mark your holes. If your template is level, your unit will be level. You'll need to remove the side panels. To do this, first, you need to access two screws behind the return grill. Across the return grill, there are tabs that you would slide to lower the grill. However, there are screws behind these tabs. Pop the tabs off and remove those screws. Now you can remove the return grills. Behind the return grills, there is one screw on each side for each side panel. Remove both screws. Now simply slide the panels up and pull them off. There are tabs on the panels that slide into slots on the unit. You'll figure it out. I have faith in you. Hanging the unit from or on a ceiling is a lot like a ceiling cassette. Just ensure you have enough clearance for both airflow and service. Hey look, it's that drawing we saw before. Nuts and bolts, bottom and top, bottom and top. Use the template to mark where your threaded rod or mounting bolts will go. If you choose to gravity drain, ensure that there is no trap. We do not need traps on our indoor units. Use a T for a vent for long vertical drops. Ensure that the drain will exit above any water line if draining into a gutter or ditch, for example. Ensure the drain is downhill and there are no traps. Properly support the drain and follow local codes. As with the console, there is a void inside the unit where you can install a mini pump. Be sure to install the pump correctly in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. As always, test the drain prior to commissioning. Let's move into something you're all more familiar with, ducted units. We have our low static ducted unit, our high static ducted unit, our super high static ducted unit, 
Remember, you aren't using the 54,000 BTU or higher in Mini VRF. And then the large high static ducted unit, which you won't be using with Mini VRF either. Does anyone know what these things are? They are duct calculators or commonly referred to as duculators. You are responsible for sizing your duct. We will not tell you what size you need. I can give you the static pressure in CFM, but I can't tell you how long or what size your duct will be. The low static units are small, so they require the least amount of clearance. Although these are our minimum clearances, it does not mean that you should install it with just the minimum clearance. We only need 11 and 3 quarters inches on the control box side. I can't fit my head inside 11 and 3 quarters inch. Okay? I'd give myself a little bit more room than that. For the high static ducted units, you'd need about 10 inches. For the super high static ducted, you need a little more clearance on the control box side at nearly 12 inches. You'll also need a little less than 40 inches of return duct. Why? That's right. Noise. You guys are smart. Use the template to mark your placement for threaded rod. Nuts and washers, top and bottom. Use the inserts to hold the top washers. Everyone knows this by now. There it is again. Wouldn't you say I think this is important? Every ducted unit you'll be using with a mini VRF has a built-in pump. They're all rated at 39 and 3 eighths from the bottom of the unit. Note the horizontal maximum run. It is 11 and 3 quarters. You should always aim your upward flow vertically or straight up and down. Never run it diagonally uphill. Support the drain and follow codes. Low static units are often replacing pancake units like the one in the picture. You can see the return at the bottom. To change the configuration on a low static unit, you're just removing the bottom plate and installing it on the back of the unit. Easy, right? Test the drain. Now let's get a little more interesting. As stated earlier, the AHU kit lets us add a regular unit to a VRF system. Let's talk about the one big consideration. You'll need the contact, the coil or unit manufacturer to obtain the internal refrigerant volume of the coil. You can see that we have a minimum and a maximum. Choose the size you need and ensure that it falls within these ranges. You'll need to remove any internal metering device, including TXVs and cap tubes. For screw-on types, you can use this fitting in its place. Always braze and then screw on. The kit has two parts, an EEV box and a control box. The EEV box is weather resistant and can be mounted externally. The control box should be protected from rain and snow. Looking at the diagram, your liquid pipe enters the EEV box where the refrigerant is metered and exits as very cold vapor. It then enters the recoil where it cools the air. As you can see, you can use this kit in many applications. For installation, they must be both mounted on a stable surface and the EEV box must be vertical. Both components need to be accessible for service. The maximum piping length from the EEV box to the coil is 78 and 3 quarter inches. Remove the front cover on the EEV box and use all four screw holes for maximum support. On the control box there are four brackets. Use all four for proper support. When wiring, use the wire clamps to secure your wiring while leaving some slack to reduce tension. Your 208230, L1 and L2 tie into the L and N terminals on the left labeled XT1. Wire in the low voltage coming from your unit's blower relay to the H and N terminals. You can also wire in medium and low speeds. If using just one speed, leave the jumpers in place along the top. You'll wire in your communication wiring from the rest of your VRF system into D1 and D2. We'll cover that in more detail in the piping and wiring video. Communication wiring to your wired remote controller ties into H1 and H2. Remember, you will not be using a third-party thermostat. Please be sure to flush your coil. You must get rid of any oil or other contaminants. I'll say this again in the piping and wiring video, but always use nitrogen while brazing. Keep components cool using heat absorbent paste and water. You'll go ahead and set your dip switches to the corresponding capacity using the chart provided. So your EEV knows what to do, you'll need to install two pipe sensors. 
your RT2 will be installed at the coldest pass of the coil and the RT4 at the warmest pass. Leave a little slack in your sensor wires and mount them horizontally like in the picture. This will keep droplets of water off the wire side of the sensor. You'll place the sensor on the side of your pipe within 30 degrees of the center. You'll then wrap it with aluminum tape for good heat transfer and wrap it with the included rubber piece for waterproofing. Finally, you'll secure with the zip ties and wrap all of it with insulation included with the HU kit. Last but not least, you need to install the RT1 sensor in the return airstream of your unit. I appreciate you watching this video. Continue your mini VRF training by watching the outdoor unit installation video available at edgetechhvac.com.